While road salts help melt ice and prevent people from slipping, those little pellets could be doing far more harm than good. Salt le levels in some fresh water waterways around Toronto are exceeding those found in oceans. That's not only raising concerns about the health of the ecosystems within, but scientists now worry about the future of some of Canada's largest waterways, including the Great Lakes. Joining me with Morris, Professor of Earth Sciences at the Tor University of Toronto, Miriam Diamond. I think this was shocking for a lot of people, Miriam, to hear uh, that the salt that we use to stop us from slipping is having a, a damaging effect on these waterways. So what kind of damage are we talking about? Well, we're talking about changing the ecosystem. I mean, we're changing the ecosystem from being fresh water into almost a, a salt water ecosystem. I mean, it's incredible that the saltwater blue crab was found in one of the creeks in Toronto. You know, we use the equivalent, at least in Toronto, of 2,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools of road salt every winter. 2,000 Olympic swimming, swimming pools, pools of yeah. salt? That's right. Yeah, it's an incredible amount of salt. And the salt doesn't go away, right? It goes into the soils, it goes into waterways. So it keeps accumulating every year, it becomes more and more salty. So you mentioned the blue crabs. In 2012, blue crabs, which need salt, water to survive, were recovered from Mimico Creek. This is in Crooksville Creek in Mississauga. Meanwhile, chloride levels have at times exceeded that of the oceans. This is according to the Credit Valley Conservation. Both of these streams feed into Lake Ontario, which is a huge body of water. Miriam, would this have then a toll on our drinking water? Well, eventually it will, but where it's most important is drinking water in terms of wells, so well water. So uh, when the salt is applied, it goes into the soil, it can get into groundwater, and once it's in groundwater, like, the game's over, it's become salty. So, for example, in New Hampshire, they've spent over $3 million in replacing private wells because they become so salty that the water isn't drinkable. Well, and I imagine there's not only impact on the salinity of the water, but we also know salt is quite corrosive, so any infrastructure that's within the area is going to have uh, a measured impact as well from the amount of salt that's in that groundwater, as you mentioned. Absolutely. So the effect on infrastructure is everywhere, anywhere from about $300 to $700 um, uh, per, per piece of infrastructure. So, I mean, the really important thing is to figure out what we should do about this. Yeah, so what can we do? I mean, uh, like, I tried to not salt, and in Ontario, with all of the ice storms that we have, it, like, you're slipping and sliding everywhere. What can we do? Right, well, it's only southern Ontario, and road salt only works between zero and minus seven degrees Celsius. So outside those temperature boundaries, don't use road salt. Shovel. 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 Good exercise. Do warm up first, so you don't. <laughs> but shoveling is good. And then how much salt should you use? So only 20 grams per meter squared. So meter squared is about the size of a, of a block of sidewalk. So 20 grams, it's about how much you would put in a large soup pot. Okay, so That's muscles, it. muscles and a lot less. Yeah. Miriam Diamond, thank you so much for coming in. You're welcome, thank you.